Hi, this is Bart Polson, and this video is a walkthrough of Zed Shaw's Learn Python the Hard Way. And in this, we're going to be doing the first exercise, which actually involves mostly installing some software and doing some very basic commands in the command line. The first thing you need to do, of course, is go to get to his book. He has a free HTML version online available at learnpythonthehardway.org. And we're going to use that one. I'm just going to click this, read the free HTML online. Although you do have the option of purchasing a downloadable version and with access to videos. I did that. It's a great idea to support him if you're able to. But for purposes of this course, I'm going to be using the HTML one. We're going to be doing this one right here, exercise zero, the setup. All right, now what we're going to do here is a few things. Number one is we're going to, um, if you have a Windows or Linux computer, you will need to install Python. Macs come with it. And if you have a Linux, I'm assuming you already know how to do all that stuff. So very briefly, you need to install Python. Now, he gives a little note down here. He says, go to this address. It's python.org slash download. Let me just open that one up in a new tab. Now, there's two versions of Python. There's version 2, which is currently 2.7.6. There's version 3, 3.3.4 uh, currently. And they're not totally compatible with each other. And even though version 3 has a lot of advantage, so much more of the code that's available right now is in version 2. And that's what Zed uses for his book. And so that's what we're going to be using. So if you have a Windows computer, you want to go here and download Python 2.7. And 0.6 is what's current right now. You can just click on that if you want. And from there, you can just download the installer and install it on your computer. I'm going to let you uh, deal with that one because I'm working on a Macintosh right here. And if you have a Mac, it's already installed. You don't have to do anything. What you do need to do, however, is install some other software for writing the programs, writing the scripts that we're going to do in Python. Now, it's true that Python does have a what's called an integrated development environment or IDE that's called IDLE, I-D-L-E. And while that's useful in a lot of situations, and if you do Python for kids, you're going to use that one. For purposes of this course, we're not going to use that because we're going to do a fair number of commands that do not work in IDLE but need to be done in the terminal or the command line interface. So that's what we're going to be using for this particular course. Um, Zed recommends two different things. If you're on a Mac. He recommends Text Wrangler. It's right here. And if you click on that, it will, let's try it again. I'll click on it like I mean it. There we go. It's bare bones software and you can download it right here. It's free software and I already have it installed on my computer so I'm not going to download it right now. Um, but it's for writing text and programming is just text. It's just words that you type. And um, that's what we're going to use on this one. I'll show you in a minute what it looks like. If you're on a Windows computer, Zed recommends, and I would recommend too, that instead you use something called Notepad++, which you can get from notepad-plus-plus.org. Click on that one. It's a fabulous environment. This is a great one for working on Windows. It's also free. Download that and install it, and you'll be good to go. So, assuming um, you want to pause for a moment. You can download, get them installed, and get them open. You also, you can change the way that each one of them looks. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to make this, um, I'm going to open up my version of Text Wrangler. Now, I've taken Text Wrangler and I've made it black and I've changed it to green font and stuff. You, you have, if I hit command period, I got the preferences right there and I've just changed the appearance, uh, excuse me, the appearance. And, um, you know, that's fine. You make it however you want. You see it's going to have a blinking cursor. The lines are numbered. And that's how we're going to be working. I'm going to move this back down into a corner here. And I'm going to move Zed's book off to the left. My screen. By the way, I'm using a little piece of software called Divi that's available in the Mac App Store. And I use it to manage the windows on my computer. It makes life a lot easier. Once you get things installed, Zed wants us to do a few things, and these are not going to make sense if you have not worked with the command line interface before. In fact, that's why if these commands don't make sense, then what you want to do is you want to go to back to the table of contents, 
and complete this thing, the command line crash course. And you click on that, and that's a separate little course, and I have an entire playlist of videos that walk you through that one as well. You need to do that so you're familiar with the commands ls and you know make directory and, and copy and stuff like that in the command line. So that's a prerequisite for this course. If you haven't done that already, or if you're not comfortable with the command line, do that one all the way through first. It doesn't take a real long time, and things will make a lot more sense if you do it that way. Okay, so I'm back to uh, Zed's thing here. He says, put text wrangler uh, in your doc, or, you know, truthfully, the way I get to it is with the spotlight. And the Mac, that's that little magnifying glass right here. You can also do command and the space bar to bring it up. And, you know, there it is, text wrangler. I've got several text editors on my computer. There's one, text wrangler, and I just hit return and it opens up. I've already got it open. You can put it into your dock if you want. I don't keep things in my dock, but there's the terminal. There's Text Wrangler. Do what you want. Now, let's go to this one. You run the terminal program. I open terminal. I do the same thing with Spotlight. I just uh, hit Command Spacebar and open up terminal. If you're in Windows, you're going to instead be using a program called PowerShell. You go down to the start menu, click on that, and so you get the little search thing, and type in PowerShell. People will often use different programs for uh, doing command line in Windows, but for a number of reasons, Zed is very clear, please use PowerShell. It's going to be a lot more consistent with what we're going to do. And that's already installed on your computer. You open it up, and again, the colors might be different, and you know, I'm just going to, if you want to, you can come right here to, for instance, its preferences, and you can change the way things look. It's not a big deal. I made mine green on black because I like that matrix look. And um, anyhow, so this is what it looks like. It's it, and it's a it's a command line interface. It's another way of interfacing with the computer, the same way that, for instance, in the regular Finder, the drop down menus and the keyboard commands are ways of interacting with the computer. And this right here is the graphical user interface, which shows me what's on my computer and how things work. And I'm gonna be working with that one a fair amount in this one. So here's uh, instruction number six in Zez's thing. He says, come into here and type the word Python. And now in Windows, we're assuming you have successfully installed Python. You may need to restart your, uh, you may need to start Notepad++. You may need to restart PowerShell. Who knows? You may need to restart your computer, but it should go through. Now, I did have uh, some people who had some kind of bizarre permissions issues that I am not able to help you with, but you can Google those and usually find the solution that you need. But if you're in Mac, you're good to go. You just type the word Python, and remember, the command line interface is case sensitive. It needs to be all lowercase when you type this. By the way, what this means right here, the BP is the name of my computer. And the tilde, the little curly line, represents my currently active folder. In a Mac, the tilde is your named uh, directory. See, I got my little, it's my home folder. And mine is, is called BART, but it just puts a tilde there. And this thing that says BART and the dollar sign, that is a command prompt. And that tells me where I'm supposed to type things. So I type Python, I hit return. And now I actually have a version of Python installed on my computer put together by Nthought, and it's it's a whole collection of stuff. It's nice, but it's the same Python we're gonna be running. In fact, it looks like I'm on 2.7.3, and I better update that. But you know, we're good to go. And you see now that my cursor is blinking, there are three arrows right next to it. You see those three right there? That's a Python prompt. I am now no longer running in what's called Bash or Shell. Bash, by the way, stands for Born Again Shell. And Shell is another name for the command line interface. I'm not in that anymore. I'm now working in a separate language. I'm working in Python. And so there we go. On the other hand, none of the stuff we're going to use in this class is going to work very well if we're in Python already. We need to be doing it from the command line interface. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get back out of this by hitting Control Z. And you see that that stops Python, and I'm back at my regular prompt, the, the BART with the dollar sign. All right, now that gets us to line eight. We're back where we were. Okay, number nine, make a directory in the terminal. 
If this is confusing to you, then stop what you're doing, go to the appendix and do the command line crash course. Then it will make sense. I'm gonna make a directory in my home folder. So I'm gonna use mkdir, make directory, and I'm gonna call it uh, lpthw for learn Python the hard way. And I'm doing it all lowercase. You'll notice that that is not down here currently. I'm gonna hit return and ta-da. Now there's a directory or a folder. Their folder and directory mean the same thing. It's there, it wasn't there before. For line number 10, Zed says change the directory into the uh, terminal. Change in, sorry. Change your active directory to that newly created one using the terminal. Now here I am in the terminal. One of the things I'm gonna do, by the way, is I'm gonna do PWD to print working directory. And this lets you, that's, that's my home folder, the one that says user slash Bart. And if I want to get a list of the same things that you can see down here in this window, you want to see those same things, because those are all in the folder, I can come up here and type ls, and that's for list, list the stuff that's in it. And this is all the same stuff. Sometimes uh, some things that are invisible in the finder show up in here. But we've got all of them, and it's in alphabetical order from top to bottom, left to right. And there is the one I'm looking for. So all I need to do here is do CD for change directory, LPTHW. And now you can see my active directory is reflected right there. So it has the name of my computer, a colon, and then the active directory. Um, by the way, I have I know I mentioned this elsewhere, but another way to change directories is also to type CD in a space. And then in a Mac, you can actually just drag stuff up into the folder. You see now it, it inserts the path. I can hit, and now I'm back into movies. That's that's pretty cool. But I'm gonna go back to where I was before. And I'm gonna just hit CD to go back to my root folder. And then I'll do, I'm gonna hit the up arrow a couple of times. So I can redo that command CD, change directory to the directory I just created. There it is. By the way, now I'm gonna clear out my screen right now. And I can do that either by with, there's three ways to do it. I can come up here to um, wait a second, I keep losing it because I don't use the command. There we go. It's under edit. I can either do clear all, um, or I can do command K, I, or I can also just type the word clear. And the stuff isn't actually gone, it's just pushed it up. And that's a, it's called a scroll back. And so it's nice to have it still there if you need it. Anyhow, it says learn how to change into a directory in the terminal. So I am I have done that. I am in the directory. And if we want to do PWD for print working directory, you can see that's where I am. So my uh, command line is now focused on this folder right here. Okay, number 11, use your editor to create a file in this directory. So that means Notepad++ or uh, Text Wrangler and then save it in that directory. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to come to Text Wrangler, which I've got open right here. I'm gonna create a, a new file. This is a new file. This is the second line. This is the third and last line. Okay, and then I'm gonna save that. And I'm just gonna put it did he tell us to give it a particular name? That's okay. I'm just going to um, go back to where I was, and let's just call it, since this is a name he seems to like, we'll call it test. Actually, you know what? I'm going to call it exercise00.txt, and I'm going to tell it to put it in LP, THable, W, learn Python the hard way. And now notice over here, there's nothing there right now. I hit save. Voila, it shows up, and there's my three lines of text that I just wrote. Okay, the next thing. Zed says, go back to the terminal using just the keyboard to switch commands. That's really easy. On a Mac, you hold down the command key and then the tab, and it switches you from one program to another. That's easy. And if you have several windows in the same program, you can use to command and then uh, the sort of tilde sign that's above tab to switch from one window to another. Um, and I think that on a Windows PC, it's, it's, it's a similar thing. It's this, this controller command. It's the second button on the bottom from the left plus the tab key. We'll do a similar thing. 
Anyhow, and now he says, number 13, back in terminal, see if you can list the directory to see your newly created file. So I'm currently in this folder. I'm just going to hit ls for list that says show me the contents. And voila, there it is. That is my new folder. It's the same thing that's right here. And um, we're done. I'm just going to do a few things here to clean up. I'm going to go back to my home folder with the CD. Uh, sometimes you might need to do CD and a tilde, but you know, on mine I don't need to. And then I'm going to clear it out so I can be all done. Anyhow, that's it for exercise zero, um, the basic setup for Zed Shaw's Learn Python the Hard Way. Hope you got through that, and I'll see you again in the next lesson.